Hey guys, if you'd like to help support my channel, please turn off ad blocker. Also, you can donate to my Patreon for as little as a dollar or as much as a hundred dollars. Also, you can look at the links below and using those links will help support me. Now, back to the video. Hi guys, this is Red from Red's Third Dimension Gaming and today I'm bringing you another review for another Neptunia game. The latest Hyper Dimension Neptunia game has finally been released for Steam and PC. Super Dimension Neptune vs Sega Hard Girls is a fusion of the cast of the Hyper Dimension Neptunia games and several Sega gaming consoles. Idea Factory International and Sega work together to bring gamers an ultimate mashup. Super Dimension Neptune vs Sega Hard Girls begins in the Grand Library which holds all of the world's history within it. Our main protagonist of this game, IF, decides to venture into the library. Unfolding before her very eyes, books begin to vanish. The world's history begins to disappear, and the reasons for this occurrence become a mystery. IF goes on a time-traveling journey to uncover the truth behind this strange disappearance of history. She must work with both the Sega Hard Girls and CPU goddesses to recover the lost history. The story for Super Dimension Neptune vs Sega Hard Girls is fantastic. Like previous games in the series, it has humor, gaming references, and fantastic scenes. The problem that I ran into was the time system. For the first time in the franchise, Super Dimension introduces a time system. Players will have only a limited amount of attempts at changing history by completing quests before they have to fight the final boss. Thankfully, if you fail because of how overpowered the boss is, you get to continue to complete quests. You also get to keep all your items, stats, and levels, but you'll have to give the boss a boost in stats of your choosing. Time systems in general are terrible because they usually make a player rush through the game, skip side quests, and not get to experience as much. The dialogue is great, the voice actors of our favorite characters are back. Neptune, IF, Nepgear, Plutia, and Uzume return as playable characters. Many of the new characters are from Sega consoles, including Sega Hatsumi, Dreamcast, Sega Saturn, Game Gear, and Mega Drive. The amount of new and returning characters is fantastic. How long it takes to complete the game is completely up to how good you are at grinding and handling repetitive gameplay. Also, if you get the Deluxe Edition or buy any the DLC, there's a few things there that will help you level up faster. We also get a unique battle system, however, it is by far the worst gameplay that I have ever seen in a Hyper Dimension series game. Players can either attack an enemy with preset attacks, or hold down the attack button in order to fight. It takes all the unique combo making out of what made some of the previous games' battle systems so much fun. Players can use many different unlockable skills and classes too. The game features several classes for each main character. The clones of the goddesses and hard girls cannot change classes, so for the majority of the game, you may only use class change on IF and Segami. The game's preemptive strike also is annoying because sometimes even when you attack first, you won't always get the preemptive strike and will be ambushed by several enemies. This is also another thing that I noticed in Dark Rose Valkyrie. This is the same exact problem that I had in that game. Except Dark Rose Valkyrie is worse than this game by preemptive striking. During battle, players will gain SP by attacking multiple times. Every time you use a skill or transform a character, her SP will be used. I actually enjoy starting out with a full bar of SP every time. In this game, you have to earn your SP and I didn't like that. There is a bar at the right of your screen that is for fever time. Once you reach 100%, this special skill allows you to attack the enemy as much as you want without them getting a turn. Once the meter depletes the whole way, you will go back to fighting as you normally would. The game also features floating special items in battle such as hearts, diamonds, and stars. Depending on what item it is, one of your characters can jump and earn health as P or something else that is useful. Traversing the same areas but in different eras of time can be quite boring. 
The game doesn't really change anything within those areas. There are coins that will remind you of Sonic when picking them up and secret baseballs. In each era, in the same location lies the same baseballs and coins. Yep, they don't change the locations at all and even the enemies are the same. The game does include some rope climbing, but with a weirdly adjusted camera. So it tries to fix it if you move the right analog stick. It'll automatically try to focus on the side view. You can't like move your camera around, which is weird. The gameplay as a whole feels like a step back from the previous games in this series. Have the graphics been improved on the PC version of this game? Yes, the graphics look so much better on PC. However, if you are using a Steam Link with your TV, they'll look similar to the Vita version. Super Dimension Neptune vs Sega Hard Girls also can be played in 4K if you have the computer capability and the right monitor. And it looks freaking gorgeous. Colors are deeper, everything just looks great. I, I can't explain it any better than that. It just looks amazing compared to the Vita. The frame rate also seems to hold up well on the PC version. If you play it on your PC and you're using the Steam Link for your TV, it's going to look a little like the Vita version, so it's not going to run as smooth. Some of the monsters in Super Dimension Neptune vs Sega Hard Girl look ridiculously dull in the game. Remember the cute baby bugs in Mega Dimension Neptunia V2? I sure do, and I don't remember their eyes looking so dopey. It's strange that some of the enemies look worse in this game than they did in the previous game. And yeah, it's just weird. You think they'd be stepping up their game. Like if they're gonna have the same enemies, make them look the same. Don't make them look weird and dopey. Overall, Super Dimension Neptune vs Sega Hard Girls has a fantastic plot, but has a lousy execution. The gameplay is one of the worst of the series. Graphics in the game are much better than its Vita counterpart. The comedy in the dialogue is one of the best in the series by far, and it will carry you through this game. I give it a 7.5 out of 10. The game has been improved upon graphically, but that doesn't make up for the less intriguing gameplay. If you enjoy Hyper Dimension games and you must have this game in your collection, then you can pick up the game for 30% off its first week on Steam. Thank you guys for watching. If you would like to buy the game and also help support my channel, you can use the Play Asia link to buy a Steam code and then buy it on Steam. You also get $3 off of $20 if you use the code R3D. I'd also like to give a shout out to my patrons for the month of June. Malik Streeter, Unknown GH, Yo-Yo Mongo, Helgi Gunlogsen, and as always, Mike Shadow 24 Thank you guys for supporting me, and if you would also like to help support me by donating to my Patreon, you can go down to the link below, and if you donate $1, you'll get a shout out. If you donate $5, you'll get access to early reviews and early content. If you'd like to see more gameplay footage, I have a full walkthrough for the Vita version of this game, and I also have some PC gameplay up sometime soon. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget the thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe, and see you in the next review. Hey guys, if you'd like to help support my channel, please turn off ad blocker. Also, you can donate to my Patreon for as little as a dollar or as much as a hundred dollars. Also, you can look at the links below and using those links will help support me.